Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Today I'm going to be talking about some comic, just an old-fashioned comic talk episode. I have uh, not talked about a lot of the comics I've been reading for the last oh, month or so. I've done a couple reviews in March on YouTube. Um, you can check those out. Uh, but instead of going through the long list of comics that uh, I've read in this last month or so, I decided to just pick out a few of the highlights and talk about those here. And see, uh, let's see, the first up is uh, The Answer. This is number four. This is a limited series. This is four of four. This is by Mike Norton, Mike Norton and Dennis Hopeless. Uh, the story's by them. Mike Norton did the art. Dennis Hopeless did the, uh, the actual writing on it. Um, this is a very interesting comic in that um, it, well, as you can see, the, uh, if you look at the cover here, um, you know, the answer is the guy in the suit with the exclamation point uh, for a, for, that's, not, that's on his face. And, but he's, and, and, it's, and, and the title is The Answer, right? Well, it, the story is really not about the answer, not the character in the book. Um, the answer to the, the protagonist's um, uh, dilemma here, and hold on, let me, sorry, I should be more prepared for this. Um, let's see here. Her name is Devon. Should I remember that? Okay, so Devon is the, the, the main character of the story. Um, I've talked about this title before on a previous podcast, uh, but since it was ending, I wanted to, to take a look at it again. And it's an interesting comic in that um, Devon uh, is not your typical um, damsel in distress. She's in uh, a, a bad situation and you know someone's trying to hurt her or at least manipulate and use her but she is um, not your typical like I said damsel in distress so she you know she takes charge of what's going on she's asking you know the right questions or at least trying to get to some semblance of the truth from the characters that she's interacting with in the meantime this character the answer keeps popping into her life and ostensibly is trying to save her uh, from you know the quote unquote bad guys, which at first in, in the first part of the the story, you know issues one and two thereabouts, you think that maybe um, you know the the the, uh, the supposed bad guys really aren't bad guys, uh, but actually at least the the guy behind the the curtain um, turns out actually to be the bad guy, um, and. And I should have prefaced this uh, before. If you haven't read this title or any of these comics I'm talking about, I probably will be spoiling at least some aspects of it. So be warned. Uh, let's see. So in this in this uh, issue, uh, Devin actually finds out what's been going on and why. And the guy behind the corporation that she's uh, become a part of, that um, has offered her a job and you know all the the resources and research that you know something that that really fits along with what she likes to do. You know she she's she's a librarian, but she she you know she has um, like a genius level um, uh, ability to solve puzzles and and figure out things. And it turns out that in the end, uh, what this is all about is that when she was much younger. She was able to, what was she, uh, 10 years old, I think it was. I can't remember exactly what her age was, but she was really young. But she was able to decode uh, this ancient text and opened a portal to another dimension, it looks like. This was seen by the, uh, I, I think he's, at that time he was a janitor at the museum where this book was. And he saw this and he... Um, then proceeds for the next, what, 15, 20 years uh, trying to build up, or tr basically trying to get Devon and get him access to this portal, this text. And, of course, Devon thinks that this whole thing, that that, that experience in the uh, the museum was kind of like a, a nightmare, and she's, she's had recurring dreams uh, about this over time, and to her it's just a very frightening thing. Uh, but of course, she confronts it with with the usual strength that this character has been shown, and basically, the the, the guy is able to open the portal, and he's basically he wants Devin to join him as as some sort of Adam and Eve, 
um, going into the portal and coming back out of it, I guess, uh, to remake the world. Of course, the answer shows up and uh, spoils everything. Uh, and Devin is able to close the portal. And then you think it's over, but it's really not. Uh, Devin ends up going home. Oh, well, she, she escapes. She's attacked, but then uh, this guy shows up uh, along with the answer. And um, he gets, well, the answer gets killed in the, in the portal. It's, it's very, this very kind of gruesome scene where um, the bad guy is, and I can't remember his name, sorry, but uh, the bad guy has, he's turned into this, like this, he's got tentacles. And there was this, this bit before about um, a squid in, in, the, in the title having to do with Devin. And so it all, it all kind of relates in some way. It's, 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 it's a, it's, it is like a puzzle. It's like all these little pieces that you're trying to fit together. And, and in the end, everything does fit together to a certain degree um, with, with the story. And, and I really like that aspect of it. Uh, again, I, like, I liked, uh, well, I'm, let me get back to that for in a second. But um, what, I, what I enjoyed about the, the ending is that you, you kind of get sort of an ending. You think it's done, but it's really not. And uh, the guy is basically the guy, the, the bad guy survives. Uh, or at least his organization does. It's you. You actually see him in a news report as as this the guy that Devin left with, who is a companion of the answer, who actually turned out to be a security guard who rescued Devin from uh, that portal, that situation, and he and the answer have been protecting her from from this bad guy uh, for the last fifteen or twenty years, whatever it's been, and. But the bad guy or his organization, I'm, not, I'm unclear about that part of it, uh, but they blow up Devin's library, and that really pisses her off. And uh, so the answer shows up again, protecting her from, from the, 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 uh, the hired guns of this corporation or organization. And uh, she decides, you know what, I'm through you know, being a pawn in this situation, and she just kind of walks off into the night all by herself. And it's and it, you know it's not the end. I think this is coming back. Uh, I, you know if the sales were good enough on this, and I kind of hope they were. I'd like to see more of this. I, like I said, I really enjoyed the depiction of Devon as as a very independent, strong-willed female character in a situation where she doesn't necessarily rely on you know the superhero, the male superhero, to save her. And that has been the strongest point of this. Uh, series so far, the fact that the the superhero character, which is you know kind of a it's it's kind of the draw I guess uh, for us uh, superhero readers, um, you know in Dark Horse this is from Dark Horse, uh, Dark Horse is doing more super superhero type stuff, uh, this is one of them, uh, but it's not about the superhero and and if it, and if this book continues I really 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 hope that they do not um, uh, make the answer more of, or make him the you know the, the the main focus of the series i hope devin continues to be you know the the batman to the answer's robin so to speak so uh if you haven't checked this out and and um i haven't spoiled it too much for you uh you should check this out when it comes out on trade or maybe pick up the back issues if if, if you can but uh, it was it was a very entertaining story i was very surprised at what it turned out to be considering the solicitations that I read about it. So that's the answer. Uh, next up, and these are these are in alphabetic order. There's no order in terms of like the time uh, that I or the, the the release date that I that I read these, but um, here we go. This is Danger Club number five. Danger Club is back, yes. Um, because I love this comic so much. I've talked about this several times on the podcast. Um, this is by uh, Landry Walker, Eric Jones, and uh, Michael Drake, Rusty Drake. And so this, this comic started a while ago. It started last year. We're only up to issue five. And why is that, uh, you ask? Well, it's because uh, Mr. Drake's kids, he has two kids, and they were in an awful uh, uh, automobile accident, and they've been recovering from that. Of course, that meant that he could not spend as much time uh, working on uh, the colors for this comic, and I believe everybody decided uh, between Mr. W- Mr.'s Walker and Jones and you know Image Comics, which is this is, this is from, um, they decided that they would uh, uh, delay release of these issues until uh, Drake could could catch up, and I I thought that was a very admirable thing. Um, the only 
problem with that is that, or my fear with that is that this title lost, um, you know, a bunch of readers because it was coming in, out, coming out infrequently, uh, which is very unfortunate if that's the case because this is a damn fine comic book. Uh, it's right up my alley. It's you know, teen superheroes. I love that stuff. I've talked about this before on the podcast. Uh, I love the teen superhero aspect of it. Um, this is not your your 1980s new Teen Titans, though. Although it does, and there are certain riffs on that that theme, that um, that trope of of teen superhero groups. Because this is a very violent and bloody <laughs> uh, story, um, uh, but it but it's for some reason it's really captured my attention and my imagination. And I'm doing everything that I can to promote it because I really love this book. Um, I, I I don't want to talk too much about this because I really really want you to go get uh, go get the trade if you if if you haven't that that's issues one through four and that just came out recently as well, and then issue number five just came out. Um, but what you get in here and I'm not, and like I said I'm not going to talk too much specifics because I want you to enjoy this book as I have where you're just reading along and you're you're surprised and delighted and uh, blown away by what's what's in here Um, but but the 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 bad guy of this story reveals what he is planning to do and it's really funny because to some degree, there is a certain amount of um, commonality between this and the answer uh, having to do with portals and entering the portal and remaking the world. Um, I, I'm sure that's just coincidence. You know, that's that's a that's a common science fiction trope anyway. But um, but but it's in it's in Danger Club too, and I believe I read this one before the answer number four. I think maybe my memory sucks, so I don't know. Uh, and I'm not going to go look at it right now. Uh, uh, let's see. So anything else? Um, oh, the, the 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 lead character, the lead teen superhero, Kid Vigilante. Um, uh, I will spoil this part. No, wait, I won't. Never mind. Something happened to him in issue four that I, I went, wow. How are they going to? How are they going to get out of this? How are they going to continue with this? And um, I think I know how they're going to do it. Uh, there's something shown, I think, in issue three, involving clones, perhaps. But I'm, but I'm saying too much now. Uh, but but if Kid Vigilante is not an active going forward in this title, I'll be very disappointed because um, what an interesting character. Basically, his superpower is he's always right. You know, he's kind of like he's kind of like Batman in that way. Uh, this is such a wonderful comic, wonderfully uh, wonderful story. Uh, wonderful art by Mr. Jones and the colors. I really have to give props, and I, I think I've said this before, but uh, it bears repeating. Um, uh, Mr. Drake is doing a fantastic job on this. There's so much. I don't know the colors really pop. They're really alive on the page. They're very vibrant, and um, I really enjoy that. Uh, it's 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 much. It's a much needed um, uh, look at. That's not the right. I'm not, I'm not saying that right. It's it's it's. Uh, I I just really enjoy it. Um, it's different from what I'm seeing in other comic books across all different companies, and, and if you compare the coloring, uh, in the answer, it's it's much more um, typical of comic books. Not not to not to you know say that it's bad or anything. The color artist did a good job on that, uh, but I I don't know. Uh, Drake is is really pulling out all the stops on this. Um, you know, if I had to, if I had to choose my favorite color artist out of everything that I'm reading right now, I'd have to choose him, uh, based on, you know, five issues of, of a comic I'm really loving and you should too go check it out. Uh, and you know, maybe I will good down the road. Maybe I will, um, do an in-depth review of this. Uh, we'll see. All right. Um, next up East of West. And I have the first two issues of this. This is by Jonathan Hickman, you know, one of my favorite writers right now. Um, Dragota and Martin are the other two creators involved in this. And I, when I saw this in previews, this is a few months ago now, I thought, hmm, I, this sounds like an intriguing story, but not enough to get me 
into or, or not enough to convince me to buy it um, but I saw it in my local comic shop on free comic book day and I almost bought them because I heard from other folks that it's you know it's really good uh, Travis my usual co-host on the podcast um, uh, I believe he liked that we haven't talked about it uh, but I, I think on his YouTube channel I, I, I uh, saw him talking about that and he really enjoyed it um, I read the first two issues and I immediately emailed my comic book shop uh, guy Matt and uh, told him to add that to my pull list because it's it's uh, it's really good it's very interesting so you get this alternate history of America uh, where uh, the Civil War did not end the way that it happened in our history books um, and then uh, you get at the very beginning you get this um, you get the uh, the horsemen of the apocalypse showing up only one of them's missing um, and he death is the one that's missing and he's off doing his own thing while the other horsemen um, who have resurrected as I believe um, children and so that's kind of horrific for what they do to people as they encounter them as children um, but there's this intriguing plot line going on. I'm not quite sure what is that, where it's going or what's going to happen necessarily, but it's, uh, like I said, I like the alternate history aspect of it. Uh, I like the, I mean, if you, can't, you can't get much more, um, uh, or the stakes much higher than the, the uh, apoc- apocalyptic horsemen showing up uh, <laughs> and uh, causing trouble there. Um, so we'll see where that goes, but uh, so far I'm really enjoying it. It's it's Jonathan Hickman, so I I I should have just said okay, I'm, I I I should buy it anyway. But the guy just is, he's putting out a lot of stuff recently, uh, including his Marvel titles. Um, and while I enjoy it, it's just like I I I need to I need to stop buying so many comics. Not necessarily stop reading so many comics, but buying so many comics because my pocketbook is not like in uh, all the great stuff that I'm reading, uh, uh, but you know that's my. What, how do they say that? My, that's my row to hoe, I guess. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, I'll be touching back on East of West um, in the future just to talk about it some more. Uh, but yeah, it's. I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. So anyway, um, a book that I didn't really enjoy all that much. Um, that's idolized. It ended with issue number five. Um, if you've seen the covers, uh, and I should have, I should have drugged those out. But, but um, there, you can get uh, a normal, just you know, an artist drew them. But what they did with this, and this is the reason that I bought this series to begin with. And I normally don't do this, but I saw the covers, and they were they were photo covers, and they they hired a model, and they 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 made a suit. Um, you know, to it's it's kind of a white suit with this circular stuff and patterns on there. And anyway, but but um, uh, the character here, I th- oh boy, I should have looked this up. I believe her name is Jewel in it. She so she has electrical powers. Um, but so th- so they have they have uh, this this model on all these covers, and and I bought all the all the covers that had the model. I bought those. Now, okay, like I said. I saw this. I saw the the covers. And I'm like, ooh, what is this, right? Uh, the premise, however, is that um, it's kind of like an American Idol type situation. And and there's a few of those stories that have kind of cropped up in the last few years, uh, and I've avoided them uh, except for this one because of the covers. And like I said, I don't normally just buy a comic based on the cover alone, but I did on this one. And I have to say, um, you cannot read this comic. I will tell you right now don't even bother uh, the premise is wasn't the reason it's really I have to I have to say on who is who this is by I'm sorry this is by uh, David Schwartz uh, Pascual Calano and David Curiel um, the writing of this is really subpar I have to say um, it's, it's very I don't know it's it's uh, there's nothing really special about it. The story they're telling—it's—it's it's a tale of revenge. Jules' parents died uh, from this one guy, this one uh, super-powered being, and she decides that the only way to get her revenge on this guy is to 
win this competition because the prize is that she joins, you know, basically their version of the Justice League. And that alone was kind of enough to keep me going on it. Plus it was limited series, only five issues. But then I got to the fifth issue. The fifth issue is a lot of talk, a lot of exposition, a lot of third person narration, a lot of telling and not a lot of showing, which for a comic book is really to me anathema to what a comic book is. So, you know, big fail, big, big fail for me on on the series, especially how it ended. So, I mean, other than the covers, boy, <laughs> I really can't recommend this, this series at all. I hate to say that. I, I hate to be so negative, but it was not good. Um, so, unlike Danger Club and The Answer, stay away from idolized in trade I form, uh, if you were curious at all. And you know what? It just That's just my opinion. Um, you know, go check it out for yourself. Uh, I'm sure there's there's probably you know issues online digitally at least you can read probably for cheap cheaper than what I spent maybe 99 cents per issue if if that's what the price is uh, that might be worth it I don't know um, you'll have to decide <laughs> all right uh, next up uh, the recently released series Jupiter's Legacy by Mark Miller and Frank Quitely see there you go. Uh, Wow. Um, Jupiter's Legacy. So, hold on one second here. I'm going to... Here we go. The writer of Kick-Ass and the artist of All-Star Superman join forces to create the greatest superhero epic of this generation. And the tagline is, Chloe and Brandon are the children of the world's greatest heroes. Can they ever fill their shoes? Okay. <laughs> Join forces to create the greatest superhero epic of this generation. Wow. I know Mark Miller is, you know, he's he's the hype master. I mean, he's he's kind of like um, the 21st century Stan Lee uh, in that regard. But I don't know that they've quite met the bar they've set for, their, for themselves. Uh, Frank Quitely... I understand Frank Quitely. You either basically you either like like his work or you don't. I I do, and really Quitely was a, a big part of the draw for me picking up this book. Uh, Miller, I like his ideas. I think he has great concepts, but his execution of those concepts has pretty much left me disappointed. Uh, with everything that I've read of his. Um, his Super Crooks uh, uh, miniseries just recently, uh, I actually like that. Um, that was that was probably the best story of his that I've read recently. I have the Superior Trade, and I haven't read that yet, so I'm hoping that that does not disappoint. But um, what was the, the series he did? Oh gosh, it's escaping me. But it's it was basically if Batman was a bad guy. Uh, man, watch I'll as I as I talk about some other things, it'll, it'll it'll come to me and I'll just blurt it out then. So just in case that happens, be forewarned. <laughs> but anyway, um, I can't remember the the name of that that book. But man, I hated that one. Hated it. Uh, and I, I couldn't believe I I wasted all that money on that title. Uh, okay, but back to this book, Jupiter's Legacy. Um, this started out really, really cool. I thought um, it's it's set. It starts out in 1932, and uh, the, the the characters in their you know they're they're what they're probably in their mid to late 20s at this point. Um, but the main guy, he decides that he needs to go to this island, which you know sounds very lost esque, right? But but he he has dreams about this island, and the island speaks to him, and he uh, he convinces his friends to go halfway across the world to go to this island, and basically this island gives them superpowers, and we don't know exactly uh, why or what's going on there. But that whole sequence that was set in the past, this is this is a good, I don't know, six pages or so of it. Um, it I really enjoyed that, and and I'm kind of hoping that we see more of that as time goes on, where they do these flashbacks. Uh, and then we go into uh, you know modern day uh, 
March 2013 to be specific. And here are the children of those characters from 1932. Uh, apparently, you know, they get their superpowers, they're long lived. We actually do see those same characters from 1932 as old characters. Um, older, sorry, older characters. I gotta be careful how I say that as I myself am getting old. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So they, they're, they're the, the, the original superheroes, if you will, are dealing with um, a particular villain that they've encountered before. Um, and the children who are supposed to be helping aren't. You know, they're, they're, they're way too cool. They're way too hipster for this kind of superhero stuff. And they have their issues and, and they're complaining. There, there is this really cool scene, though, where um, the uh, the... The original superheroes, I'll just refer to them in that way, are beating up on the bad guy. And one of them um, basically psychically links with the bad guy and brings him into this this world that he's created. Um, let's see, what does he say here? It. This is a beach holiday I had as a six-year-old. It took me weeks to assemble this level of detail, and it is. It's like it's like a uh, it's like a um, uh, a painting that's come to life. Um, that they're inhabiting and, and you know and, and this is probably one of the best things uh, let's see here I thought it might be nice to go somewhere tranquil while my brother demolishes your physical form would you like some cake while we're waiting <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, this, this is uh, I, I do have to admit uh, Miller can can do some nice dialogue um, uh, to be honest it's actually pretty grisly I think Sheldon's hitting you with a car right now but he shouldn't be more than, uh, than another few seconds just wait here and try not to think about it. I think they just snapped your backbone. And and the villains just slumped down on his knees on the shoreline and and just just says, "Oh God." Uh, it's it's just that one one and a half pages where they show that scene was just it was almost worth the price of the comic alone. Um, Frank Quietly art's really good. You know, it's it's Frank Quietly. Um, although I have to admit he's not really there's nothing really he's not really doing anything special here there's a lot of a lot of people talking in panels um, but it looks nice oh the daughter the the, the issue ends with the daughter after having um, sniffed some um, otherworldly cocaine or whatever it is they're, they're calling it and she just basically collapses and that's how the issue ends um, you know like I said it's just it's just superhero children complaining about their lives and you know it's it's like the spoil the the poor spoiled rich kid right that syndrome uh i will continue to read this at least you know what i try to do is give a title you know three to six issues to to, to convince me i should continue on with it uh it's it's early on we'll see how it goes but but i i am interested in especially in the origin this island what happened why they have superpowers uh, I actually don't really care about the the kids just yet. Um, they're just spoiled brats so far. You know, poor woe is me. You know, the world doesn't understand me. I my my mother doesn't understand me. My father doesn't get me. Blah 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 blah. Um, but we'll see. I'm sure something will turn around uh, on this story. Uh, it has to, otherwise I won't be reading it much longer. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, that's Jupiter's Legacy. Next up is another surprise for me, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, that is Mara. I believe it's a limited series. I'm pretty sure it is. This is by Brian Wood, Ming Doyle, Jordi Belair. Uh, this is the story about Mara, who is a superstar volleyball player in this uh, somewhat futuristic, slightly futuristic world uh, where superstar athletes are, um, well, I guess maybe not so futuristic it's kind of like now <laughs> where superstar athletes are considered um you know almost godlike uh and she is she she's she's what she's she's beloved the world over that maybe that's the difference between our society and uh this one as as depicted um because she's she's loved by the world over she's an inspiration to um you know younger people all over the world uh, she's she's well sponsored. She's so she's very rich in that regard. And uh, the the crux of it though is that she, for some reason, ends up uh, with superpowers. She she just suddenly gets superpowers where she can, I believe she can fly. She's super fast. That's I think that was the one the the superpower that first showed up 
was that she she became super fast anyway so uh, the first couple this is issue four that I have uh, talking about here but uh, the first couple issues it's it's showing that world and, and her uh, place in it and then she, she you know the first issue I believe ended with her getting the superpowers the second issue ends with uh, or uh, deals with the the fallout of that so basically instead of celebrating the fact that she has superpowers where it's kind of like how that that's kind of how superheroes are depicted especially in mainstream comics if you become a superhero um and i'll have to uh, i guess i should pr um, qualify that as well because it's more like more of a dc thing than a marvel thing but if you if you be have if you if you get superpowers and and uh and i'm extrapolating a little bit here but where mara is already loved by the public you would think that the, everybody would embrace that and maybe even take advantage of that to some degree given her sponsorships and whatnot but no um everybody looks at her looks on with at her with suspicion um the sponsors start to drop uh she ends up basically um in the grip of the government who blackmail her uh using her brother and that's 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 the basic plot so far um i have to say i was really like i said i was i was really surprised by how much i like this comic and the reason uh, because it's written by brian wood now Travis um, would respond to this uh, saying I'm crazy as he often does because there are certain writers that I just don't care for that he, he thinks are really good um, and this is one of them uh, Brian Wood has been one of those writers who seem to get a lot of attention a lot of uh, respect for their work and I just don't get it um, he's okay uh, I read uh, What's the the latest book that he's working on? Oh, Drat. I'm I'm the massive. I think that's I think that's it. Um, I it's just you know I, I I can recognize the his ability, his his skill as a writer in crafting a story. Um, it's just I just don't care for it, unfortunately. But Mara, I do like. I have enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, surprisingly so. Um, it's a little too much. A little too much plot over character for me. I like to see a little bit more um, interaction with Mara and other characters. Not that there isn't in this, but it just it's it's very it's almost superficial to some degree. I like to go. I like to see Wood go just a little bit more in depth. But this this like I said, I think it's a limited series, so I'm not sure how much he could do that. Uh, this could very easily be could have been uh, very easily. Um, um, an ongoing series and maybe that's what they're going to do this is by image we'll see how that goes I guess but uh, if if it I mean obviously it depends on how this this ends up um, but I could I could see myself buying this long term so if you like sports if you like the cult of personality uh, or examination thereof um, you should check this out uh, I, I actually don't think now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it I don't think that we that would really needed to bring in that whole superpower aspect of it I think I think there was a, a good enough story set up in the, the the whole idea of her being a really good sportsman uh, really good at her craft and you know some have something else happen um, but but this is the story that we have uh, like I said I enjoyed it so uh, and here we go again um, something that I thought I would like and wasn't pleasantly surprised and this is the movement this is by DC uh, specifically by Gail Simone and Freddie Williams the second so this is um, one half of the dual companion books you have the movement and the green team and as it says in the cover, no longer outcasts, no longer misfits. They are the movement. And based on the reactions I read online, especially on Tumblr, because I follow Gail Simone on on Tumblr, um, this this was like the second coming of something. And then I read it. So I read basically read read the reactions first. And then read the comic, so maybe you know, I, I guess you could say that that may have tainted my view of this, um, but certainly wasn't the second coming for me. It was, 
it was really just kind of disappointing. It was really meh for me. Uh, a, a pretty basic plot, you know, these these kids, kiddish, or young superheroes, I should say, or superpowered people. I'm not sure if they're superheroes, but they're protecting this certain area of the city, um, in a city where you know the cops are corrupt and all the, there's all this corruption and. And uh, Gail, I think, is really tie, trying to tie into the whole 99% versus 1%, uh, you know, the, that economic argument. And while I don't mind that aspect of it, it's just uh, I have not, there were no characters in here that appealed to me beyond, you know, just their function of, of the plot, uh, which isn't much in here, quite honestly. So uh, I, I I think, like I said, you know, this is this is my qualification. Um, I think I'm reacting more to the response to the comic, the story from other people, than I am perhaps uh, of what I've read, or or it's tainted it, in, in, like I said, in, in some way because it just it certainly wasn't it didn't move me um, like I thought perhaps it would based on the reaction. All right, um, I, I will, however, continue to read this uh, for the least like I said I, I usually give a comic three to six issues but boy it certainly didn't grab me out of the gate like you know some other number ones from DC especially you know Earth 2 really grabbed me um, uh, nothing else coming to mind right now but uh, anyway there you go there's there's that the movement and finally finally I have here another number one um, this is Suicide Risk by Mike Carey and Alana Casagrande, and I did I did talk about this. I can't remember if I talked about this on the podcast or if it was just on um, uh, one of the YouTube videos I did talking about comics. I think it was that. I think it was on the YouTube video where I was just talking about comics that I was that I had ordered and what I was looking forward to based on things that are previews, or maybe it was that previews episode. I don't know. Anyway, short-term memory problems, or maybe that's long-term. I can't. I, I don't know. I can't. Firm, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I should cut that part out. Anyway, so suicide risk. So, what does a cop do um, as the main character uh, in a world where there are superpowered people? And you think, hmm, isn't that what powers is about? Well, yeah, kinda. And that was my fear of this was that this was a a um, kind of powers esque uh, a a powers light or no that's not the right that's not the right way to say it either but but it, it'd be too much like powers that's really what I'm trying to say um, and so basically the the comic is this this cop who is in a situation where there's all these superpower beings and they're killing people and killing cops and he ends up coming out of it alive. Um, his partner uh, gets gets severely. Uh, well, I think he gets his arm torn off, if I remember correctly. Uh, so, you know, how does that affect him? And there is this scene in the comic where he goes home, and there's there's a I think a birthday party or some sort of get together. I'm sorry, I'm not remembering the details. I should have looked at this before I started recording. But you know he. You, you see, he's, he's kind of reacting in a, in a, as we've seen in cop shows and movies, perhaps, where cops, you know, they don't they, they don't uh, react emotionally to it, um, other than perhaps anger. You know, he's he's not he's not uh, broken because of it. He's not you know sobbing uncontrollably uncontrollably um, about the situation. In fact, he he comes comes across kind of numb about it, um, which. That may be accurate. Uh, I don't know. If that's the best way to to involve your reader in in your main character is 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 for him to come across as as aloof and uncaring. Um, and it's not that he's necessarily uncaring a hundred percent, but but it's it's very controlled. Um, and that may be just part of his personality. I, we don't know yet. I don't know yet because it's it's only the first issue. Uh, there, but there is a scene where he goes home and his wife tries to not, not console him, but but um, not sure quite how to describe it. But anyway, she, she 
she tells him she's going to show him a good time. And and I think and, and what I when I got out of it what I, sorry, what I pulled out of that was that this was her way of coping with this horrific situation that where, you know, this could have been her husband that died or been dismembered or, you know, something terrible happened to him and it didn't. So this is her way of of showing him how much she cares about him, you know, by by not not being the typical um and I say this again based on, you know, cop shows and movies I've seen. Um so I'd really actually really like to know, you know, how how does how does a real life couple one of whom is a cop how how does the spouse deal with this situation i really i am very interested to, to know how you know how various people deal with the, these real life tragedies like that um you know this is real life you know what i mean though you know cops deal with horrific things many times shootings and and uh you know accidents where they come you know come across that that's kind of stuff and that's got to affect him. It has to, just to some degree. I mean, I, I understand the idea of, of shutting down that part of you so that you can function. Um, that makes sense as a coping mechanism. Uh, so, how? Do, but so turn that around again to the spouse. How does the spouse deal with that kind of stuff? How does the spouse cope with it? And in this case, you know, the wife doesn't isn't isn't crying. She's not. She's not. Um, She's not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think you, you can get what I'm, what I'm going after here. But she, so, so anyway, there's, so there's a scene where, you know, they make love and, but then the guy gets up and goes, basically he's, he's, he's trying to figure out how these people got their superpowers and stop, stop that from happening more. In the end, he, he does come across some people who have this little device with a little this glowing sphere on the end of it and he basically forces them to administer this super power thing to him and that's kind of how the the issue ends so i bought this one because it's mike carey he's one of my favorite writers despite my um misgivings about this being like another powers clone title and 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 secondarily i bought it because it was you know a, a cop dealing with superpowers and how you know my my thought was how how does he how does he deal with that and uh again i have you know this is kind of like powers to some degree but i would i have trusted mike carey to to not do that and I would think that, and this is by Boom, I would think that Boom Studios would be concerned about that as well, but I, you know, who knows. Uh, but then at the end, you know, he gets touched by that device and, I, you know, if he's developing superpowers, then, I don't know, what's the point? You know, it's just another, another super-powered person going after other super-powered people, and I get that enough in the other comics I read, so... I, I'm really concerned about where, where this is going and and how long I'll be reading it. So I, I like I said, I it's by Mike Carey, so I'm going to give him a huge benefit of the doubt. But uh, we'll see. I guess we'll see. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So that is that's a bunch of comics that I've uh, wanted to highlight from the last month or so of comics that I've read. I read about I don't know 15 to 20 of these things. Um, every week uh, but there's with everything that goes on in my life and how many comics I have to read I can't always do a weekly review uh, so this was my answer to that predicament <laughs> anyway so um, uh, thanks for thanks for watching uh, thanks for listening and uh, let me know what you think about these titles or my opinions of these titles I'd love to hear from you uh, please leave comments, and I uh, guess that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll see you around. Go read some comics. Bye.